Hey there, my name is Phil. Uh, welcome to my channel. Uh, as you can see, I don't really do anything fancy. Um, my old, my nice hoodies become my workshop hoodies after they get too old and uh, I'm not cleaning up the shop to do a video, but I just want to do some interesting videos that hopefully people will get some useful information out of. Uh, my channel is all about things I do. One of the things I do is uh, beekeeping and I just got this new to me table saw. Now my old saw didn't fit a proper dado stack so whenever I would build bee boxes like the ones you see behind me here, um, some of those are commercial, some of these I made like the ones with the dovetail uh, joints, that's what I used to use to make bee boxes was all dovetail joints which is very labor intensive. Um, I've got a whole bunch of rough cut lumber, I've got to make up a lot of boxes this year and because I've got this new saw uh, I'm going to be doing box joints with a, a dado blade and I'm going to make up a jig for that. So I thought I would do a review of the dado blade I ended up going with. Uh, looked quite a bit online as well as locally, wasn't a lot locally, um, there was only like one or two, one didn't look very good and the other one was way out of my price range. So I got this guy here, um, Oshlin Professional Stack Dado Set, uh, it's 8 inch, um, 42 tooth, so this is a 10 inch table saw. Pretty common to use an 8 inch dado on them though. You can get 6 as well, you don't get quite the depth of cut, they're a little less expensive. You can get 10, um, you maybe get a little more depth of cut, but really you're, you're turning a lot more mass and so having it slightly smaller keeps that mass down. Um, and an 8 inch is going to get plenty deep for most dado cuts that you would ever cut. So uh, this particular one, they <laughs> so this came off of Amazon and there was a few sort of common threads on the reviews that I read through and hopefully some of it won't pan out. One of them of course, which was one I was just happy to live with, was the storage case. So it comes in a storage case, is not very good. And as you can see it is literally a cardboard box, they put a handle on it and they call it a storage case. So pretty impractical for actual storage, but let's unbox it and see what we got. Um, so we have a set of instructions which actually gives you a pretty good chart as to what to stack for what cuts, which is kind of nice. You don't have to experiment. You don't have to add it up in your head. Um, bunch of shims. One of the complaints uh, that was on the video was that the shims came uh, with some rust on them. And yeah, we'll do a close up, but maybe a tiny bit on some of them. They don't have very much oil on them that would prevent them from rusting. It is nice that they are all stamped with the uh, thickness of the shim on them though. That's pretty cool. Um, the other complaint was that the diameter of the, or the bore of the hole is actually slightly smaller than 5 8 which is your common arbor. Um, and some people said they were super sharp. I don't find them too bad. They are very thin pieces of metal though, so if you're not careful you probably could cut yourself I guess. Uh, as for the rest of the case, or storage case, it's basically like, it's just packing. Like it's a cardboard box with some styrofoam to keep things from shifting around during shipping. I wouldn't call it a case. Um, I'll probably make something else up to store it or put a hook on the wall or whatever. Um, so there's one of your outside blades. Uh, Dado stack, of course, is outside and inside right, blade and then however many chippers in between. Uh, one of the complaints about these guys was there was one person who said something about some chipped teeth. Um, mine look like they're all in really good condition. I don't see anything wrong with them. Uh, definitely feel good and sharp. Looks like good quality control. So all of the blades, uh, all of the teeth, you have uh, so 42 teeth, normally a dado stack would often have as little as 12 and as many as probably around 42. The more teeth you have, the nicer finish you're going to get on your cut. However, it's also 
more mass and it's more to go through the wood. So often on underpowered saws, um, people will use less teeth than rather than more. So we'll see how that part factors out. Um, the nice thing about these, so the leading tooth in each sort of set is a flat tooth, so it's going to make for a flat bottom in your dado cut, or that's the theory anyways. And then all the rest of the cuts are actually um, angled, and that's going to give you a nicer outside edge. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, carbide C4 micro ring tungsten. Uh, a little more foam. There's our other side. Both marked pretty clearly which direction they spin, what side out they are. And then this was the thing about the chippers in this that I both liked and didn't like. So a lot of chippers in dado sets will have two blades on them and they'll kind of look more like a like a rectangle piece cut. Um, the idea of two blades is probably going to be a little rougher going through things, um, but it is just the middle part of your data, like the floor. Um, these are six, which I like the idea that it's going to take out more material easier, but because they're six, um, it's basically like another full blade. So this whole thing, I, I don't know how much it weighs, but uh, a few pounds anyways, actually, like it's quite a bit. Maybe I'll weigh it and I'll put that in the in there later. Um, but again, nice because they're all marked exactly what the thickness is, 1 16th. It does come with a 3 30 seconds. Um, these are oiled really well, these blades actually. They're stuck together from the oil. Comes with a 3 30 seconds, which is nice if you've got um, undersized plywood. So your most typical dado is going to be a 3 quarter inch dado. Um, but a lot of times three quarter inch plywood isn't actually three quarter inch anymore. So you can adjust it with this as well as with the shims, of course. Um, I'm just going to pull the rest of these out. Okay, so you can see here the stack comes with the two um, outer blades. Uh, you've got four of the six tooth chippers at one eighth of an inch. It's stamped right on there. You've got one at three thirty seconds and one at 1 16th. Um, and that's it, that's all that's in the box. Um, so yeah, so we'll go through a couple things. We'll set it up um, on the saw, see if these shims are the right diameter or not, if the blade's the right diameter, and we'll make a few cuts. Um, I've got another zero clearance insert that's blank, made up, ready to go. I can, I'll put for a dado, probably a three quarter. So yeah, let's, uh, let's take a closer look at these and uh, see what they could do. Okay, so when you're doing these up, you want to make sure obviously that you've got uh, the right rotation. Um, so this rotates this way, so this would be the outside blade on this side. Um, this one rotates the opposite way, that's your outside blade there, so they're rotating towards you, which you should be able to tell by looking at the teeth. Now the other thing you want to do when you're setting up your blades and your chippers, you'll notice because this one has so many teeth, they've created this little gullet spot here, and that's what they call it, I don't know why, but basically a relief spot where your chippers line up. So if I was to take one of these chippers, oh, going backwards, if I was to take one of these chippers and line it up, I want to have it lined up like that so it fills up the gap right there. Okay, what you don't ever want to do is have your carbide teeth touching another metal surface, either on the back, I don't know getting good focus there, um, you don't ever want to have them touching each other like that, so you want to line that up as best you can. And then when you're doing up your, your next one, now obviously it's going to be spaced, so because of the way these work, let me see that, you get a little bit of overlap on the blades, right? this tooth overlaps this inside one a little bit. But when we go to our next stack, it's this next one is not going to come anywhere near this outside blade, right? So what we're going to want to do is space those equally. So let's say for example we were only doing two, we're going to want to set those up something like that, so that they're equally spaced apart from each other. And then we're going to take that next outside blade and make sure that we've got this 
tooth lined up in the gap in between. So again, never have teeth touching. And you also, once you get it all stacked up and set, and then you put it on the arbor, you want to double check again after you tighten up your nut that you still don't have any tooth teeth touching, um, because that's when you're going to possibly chip one off, have a piece go flying. It's very dangerous. Uh, so I'm going to set up a stack here, and then we're going to cut one. Okay, so you can see we've got our set up, uh, paying close attention to keep the teeth apart. Here's where you could put in uh, a shim if you needed to get a minute difference between one and the other. If you're going to put in shims uh, more than one, you, you want to try and space them out evenly. The teeth overlap a little bit, but if you were to put all your sh uh, shims on one side and then put in a uh, chipper, you'd end up with uh, probably some issues. So I'm just going to throw one in just to see because so many people said that these are too tight and they're difficult to fit on the arbor uh, or get them off. Um, yeah, I would say it's snug, like now that <laughs> they go on easy, now that it's on, I can, I'm having a hard time getting it off, and I don't want to bend it or break it, but yeah, it's definitely snug and definitely not, now that I've got pressure on it, I'm having a hard time getting it off, and I'm wondering if I have to kind of unscrew... past those things. Yeah, this is definitely a pain in the butt. So that is something that I kind of expected based on the comments. Um, and I think what I will do is just uh, get some fine grit sandpaper and just loosen that up a tiny bit because really this doesn't need to fit precisely or tightly. Holy crap. Yeah, so you can see I've kind of chipped a bit of metal and kind of pulled things a bit there trying to do that. So um, I think what I would do is I'd take a little bit of uh, fine grit sandpaper and just make that a little bit bigger. Uh, that was a pretty thin shim, which makes it kind of pop and whatever. Uh, that's the 0.05. This is a thicker one, the 0.2. Yeah, definitely the same thing. Uh, so I would say these shims are, uh, the diameter of the hole is too small to make them easy to come off and on. Even the blades themselves fit pretty darn snug, but I think you want that in the blade so you're not getting any movement up and down. Uh, this is really just a spacer, so I'm, I wouldn't worry about just giving it a fine bit of sanding and that's probably what I'll do with those. Uh, so I'm ready to put on my last outside one. Being careful to line up my outside holes with that gullet. So I'm just going to double check. Got no teeth touching, no teeth touching, no teeth touching anywhere. Now, depending on your saw, too, you want to be careful that you can fit a full dado stack. So you don't want to go any more then you want to have at least a little bit of thread showing out the end of your nut. If you don't, um, this the dado stack's too thick. So with this table saw, like I said, this is new to me. Um, it looks like three quarters is about the most I can get out of this actually. Um, unless I went with a thinner arbor washer and I have seen those available so that would be an option if I really wanted to go that route. Um, so I'm just going to tighten this up, checking my teeth as I go, making sure nothing slipped. And when you do your saw, you just have to go snug because these are self-tightening. You don't have to worry about getting it crazy, but you because then they just become hard to get apart. Um, so now I'm going to double check again, make sure nothing's touching. We got space on everything all the way around in case there's any. Yeah. We're good, so we're ready to try our first cut. I feel like I said we're gonna get going and cut right away a number of times, but anyways. Um, so the other thing we gotta do with this, um, I was talking about uh, zero in clearance insert. So this is for, uh, well it's a blank. Uh, I made up a bunch in advance. Uh, made these out of a piece of uh, old flooring material, laminate flooring material. Um, they've got leveling feet, whole nine yards, I kinda like it. 
Um, but anyways, I've got to cut it. So first thing I'm going to do is lower the blade, obviously, all the way down. Then we're going to put our insert in. Okay. And now I could just hold it like this and slowly raise it up. That's probably the more dangerous way to do it. Um, it's probably what I would have always done in the past, but since I'm making a video, I think I want to be safer so I don't tell people unsafe things to do. So I'm going to take a piece of scrap wood and a couple of clamps. And we're going to clamp this scrap on. Okay, so that gives us a secure surface for the blade to come up without my fingers being in the it way. It also gives it a backing so when the saw comes up and against the zero clearance material, uh, it's less likely to chip. But anyway, so I've plugged the saw back in, which by the way I didn't say, but when you're changing blades, always unplug your saw. So I've plugged the saw back in, we're ready to go, we're going to flip it on, and we'll slowly raise it up through here and see how it goes. Okay, so that was really noisy. Um, this is a piece of three quarter inch material. We've just come through the top. I can't imagine needing much more clearance than that normally um, for a dado cut. So that should be plenty good. Uh, now we take our clamps off of here. Take our piece off. And there's our zero clearance insert with our dado hole cut in it, okay? By the way, if you ever do just make these up, it's a good idea to have a pin on the back just so when the dado is pulling up on the back, it pulls against that pin. Okay? Um, yeah, so let's, uh, now we're finally going to make a cut. I cut through a little piece of 2x4. See how she goes. Now uh, we've got it raised, I don't know, 3 eighths of an inch, something like that. So let's see how this goes. Okay, so one of the things we're looking for on a dado is we're looking for a nice flat bottom. I would say that's pretty good. You can see, definitely see the grooves a tiny bit from uh, the chippers, but it's definitely not up and down and up and down. And on the edge, looks pretty good. Um, it does say that it does this, they call it bat ears or something. It's really imperceptible, but if you notice, there's a tiny little piece that comes down into each corner. That's from those angled um, blades. They say it makes a better finish on the bottom. I think overall it looks pretty nice. No real tear out here or there. Um, part of the reason we don't have a lot of tear out is when you use a zero clearance, as that blade's coming back down, it's pushing the wood against the clearance as opposed to open air if you had a really wide th throated insert. And so it helps prevent that chip out. So uh, I'm pretty happy with that for the price I paid for it. Um, yeah. So overall, I would uh, I would recommend that. It definitely does take a bit of energy to get it up and spinning. There's a fair amount of mass to it. It's a big thing. Um, but for the price that I paid, I'm, I'm quite happy with that.